Hello people of the internet, it's Amanda and for today's video I'm here to talk about Aokute Itakute Moroi or something blue, painful and brittle or blue, painful, fragile. No depends on you know what the English title that you want to take in so there's that this stars Shizawa Ryo and Sugisaki Hana and I'm absolutely happy that they put this on Netflix at least here in the Philippines and from what I know in other select countries as well so they released this um, because this is a film that I'm actually looking forward to a lot not just because Oreo and Hana headlined this but also because the plot intrigued me um, but I didn't look up much about it I didn't read the novel so I I was really like I viewed this movie with fresh lenses last night and um, I didn't know what to expect um, aside from what was given in the trailer so it was really a refreshing experience you know watching it now for the intents and purposes of this video there are gonna be spoilers because this is really more of like my thoughts and my analysis and my review about you know the entire plot and just basically talking about the feelings that I was going through while I was watching it um, so if you haven't seen it yet or if you're very iffy about spoilers then please click off but if you're interested to you know just chat it up and talk about um, what the movie is about or my thoughts on the movie or anything like that again this is coming from someone who viewed it with fresh lenses so no cross-referencing at all with the novels or anything like that but just you know the viewing experience of seeing the film itself so if you're into that then please keep on watching <laughs> Let's talk about the plot first. So basically, it revolves around Kiyoshi, um, which is a character of Hana, and Tabata, which is the character of Ryo. Now, what's interesting about this is immediately, like when you get introduced to this character, it it gives us the perspective of Tabata, where it's it's sort of like that idea of distancing yourself from people so that you either don't hurt them or you don't get hurt by them which is something that is in my opinion very relatable because it is the very reason why there are some people who are very careful about the relationships that they make um it is the idea that you know carefully choosing who you open yourself up to to the point that sometimes you don't really open up to anyone anymore because of that certain fear and that is what Tabata's character was embodying at the beginning of the film um, however he was his paths cross with this very idealistic girl in um, in Akiyoshi who is played by Hana who openly talks about her convictions in classes no matter you know how much like people or other or the professors or anything like that was sort of like contesting her ideas she kept on, she kept on talking about you know changing the world or if people just put down their arms at the same time then we wouldn't have wars or other conflicts or anything like that which obviously like as a viewer you can relate to her aspirations but at the same time like we absolutely know how people like the, these are in real life like there's a certain hurt um there's certain pain in in knowing someone who's so genuinely engrossed in those kinds of idealistic ideas and i feel like um within 30 minutes like it's not even 30 minutes within the film but i was already crying over um hannah's character mainly because you know um as from tabata's perspective you know this is a person who's a real deal like they know their ideals they're not just doing it to be pretentious this is this is how they want to see the world move forward to and it's kind of scary to deal with someone like that because it's like they know exactly what they want or what they wish for in the world and you know that the world isn't that good so it's either you see it in a way that um this person is too good for the world or the world is just too cruel for this person and it's 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 that thing um so i think from there like i was already starting to cry at that moment where tabata was just looking at akiyoshi and you know he was just thinking about you know what is it about her that feels so real that drawn him to her in the first place and the thing with this is that you know Akiyoshi is the type that was intrusive at first given that Tabata didn't really want anyone to 
like get near him but then she was just there and her presence was there and he didn't have the heart to tell her to like leave him alone so it just expanded into this entire thing that ultimately rolled over this certain friendship that they had um but what's interesting is that because tabata learned to care about akiyoshi um and they started you know they started moai which is this sort of like secret society that where they do community service or anything like that to to push forward this idea that they want to change the world you know slowly in their own way they want to make these changes um and at first you know um tabata was just there because of um because he just couldn't say no but while they kept on doing what they're doing you know he developed a certain passion for moai and at the same time believed in in akiyoshi's um ideas in a way and again it it's that idea of himself you know having these strong convictions having wanting to push her away initially and even like in his thought process he was saying that i wanted to say something to disgust her to just you know have her leave me um but then he starts falling into you it, it, the thing with this is that it's not exactly romantic it's that idea of attachment towards someone that you know you feel like there's a sort of like detachment or loneliness to this idea that you don't want to get attached to someone but then they come into your life um not you wishing for it and then they have you you know fall into a certain affection towards them um and sometimes it's something that i personally can relate to because there's certain distancing that you do for yourself to protect yourself but then um when people come into your life and you know they they seem to be very open about accepting you you can't help but you know still go for that and with always that constant fear that they're going to leave or they're going to like all these kinds of 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 things so that's why i think as i was progressively watching the film um it 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 was it was it's definitely emotional there's a lot of back and forth between the present and the past where it was seen that moai has significantly grown but tabata was an outsider just looking at it from a different perspective um and you can't help but wonder what happened to akiyoshi because it was their project so what happened like why is he not there and why is akiyoshi not here um and then he mentioned to his friend that you know um Akiyoshi died. Um and that's the reason why Moai is not the Moai that they pictured it to be. Um but then in a sudden twist of events we later on find out that Akiyoshi was actually not dead. Um and the entire reason why Tabata wanted to destroy Moai was because he felt like um he was betrayed in a way. Um because Moai grew and expanded um into this thing where of course like people you know part of them probably are into the cause of the whole changing the world thing the community helping building thing um but then tabata from a different lens also saw it as you know people just using it for networking people just using it for their own cause very similarly to how you know clubs in universities or in high school work where sometimes you join it to to pad up your resume once you graduate and to it, to some extent it shows that it shows us that with some growth you know sometimes these things happen and we lost our we lose our ideals along the way um but it's hard to make changes so as akiyoshi was saying it's hard to make changes just by yourself so there is a certain need to like expand and to grow um and it was necessary for moai to grow but then tabata felt like it wasn't the moai that they envisioned and that akiyoshi lied to him and it was all these sorts of things now what's interesting about this is to some extent you see that there's 
there's a certain relatability to each of them. Because obviously for Akiyoshi, no matter how idealistic her character seemed, once there's a certain acceptance to the cause that she was putting out there, obviously that's what she's going to be attracted to. Whereas for Tabata, again, it's, it's a similar antithetic kind of thing where he didn't want to belong or or be attached to someone but when he did he got so engrossed to it that his emotions aren't able to forgive this sort of like falling out that happened between them but the thing is you know he also didn't voice out his opinion towards Akiyoshi when he asked her if there was something that that they want that he wants her to change with how Moai is moving um so it's 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 that idea of he chose to distance himself from the situation and it's sort of like turned into something that he didn't want to because he didn't want to communicate with her so you couldn't really blame either of them because again there's a certain relatability to their characters no matter how extreme each of them were especially in the latter parts of of the film now what i absolutely loved about this and the moment that I started really, really like just crying um, was the back and forth between Akiyoshi and Tabata when uh, after Tabata sort of like released the information that, you know, uh, Moai was selling the information of the people that they're networking with um, to different companies. Um, in, in, it was part of his aspiration to take down Moai so that they were able to like rebuild it um, in a way that, you know, how... Akiyoshi and himself initially envisioned it to be. Now, because of that, you know, Akiyoshi was forced to to call for for this certain um, for this certain debriefing um, to apologize for what happened, even if she's not the one who directly you know did the whole like selling information type of thing. It was really more of like a confrontation, like the the confrontation between the two of them. Um, and that whole exchange was so beautifully done and beautifully written, in my opinion. It was beautifully acted because of Hana and Rio and the way that they deliver their lines. It was just so, like, I couldn't take my eyes off the screen when that was happening. And that's where all of the emotions started pouring in, at least for both of them as well. There was, um, uh, what do you call this? Like, um, Tabata finally, you know, said that, you know, you lied to me that um, you 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 said that this is what you want Moai to be. But then you turned it into this 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 thing where people just sort of like use it for anything. Like, what kind of change is it trying to um, make now? Like, it's been years, but then nothing significant happen like what happened to your ideas what happened to your hopes um that's what he 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 kept telling her and at the same time like he was also saying that you know you 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 it's it's sort of like the entire dialogue from tabata was you left me like it was that you know you 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 used me for your own convenience when you needed me but when other people came um you sort of like just put me to the side which to some effect like you wanted to shout at the screen that but you didn't tell her like she asked you what you wanted at the beginning and you didn't say anything and you just let everything happen as it is so to some extent like um you sort of like don't understand that kind of struggle but at the same time you also understand because sometimes it's hard to tell someone what you're actually feeling and Especially if you're if 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 it's about you know having that sense of abandonment or anything like that, like it's definitely something that's not easy to talk about. Um, and then on the other front, like um, Akiyoshi's interpretation was, is it because you like me, and is is it because I dated someone while uh, Moai was growing, and you know was it because of that that that's why you destroyed this thing that we started and I worked for, it was that kind of, of exchange. And then he shouted at her that, you know, you disgust me. If that's the reason why you did this, then you disgust me. And the way that th that scene was framed, where it was just zooming in on their faces, um, there was a certain claustrophobia that was happening the way it was being filmed. Where you just focus on nothing, no gestures, no anything, but just their emotions alone. 
And at the same time, like the way Rio's expression flickered, um, how he finally heard the words that he wanted Akiyoshi to say back then, you know, that he wanted to disgust her so that he would leave him alone at the beginning. But now hearing it from her after investing so many emotions for years about this thing that, you know, they started and how he hated her so much for it and how much he, how much he had passion for destroying Moai because of, of it didn't turn out the way they envisioned it to be. Um... It was such a painful scene to watch, um, but it was it was delivered in this very raw manner that was very, very. I think that they it was one of the highlight, one of the if not for the best highlight of the film, I would say. Um, but then after that, you know, he 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 sees a he sees a video of you know Akiyoshi's speech when she was apologizing after their conversation apologizing to the people and saying that you know she's disbanding moai um and she said that you know there was so, this this was something that she actually loved and it wasn't like she was doing it to be accepted or anything like that which to some extent you can imagine that to some extent it's it's kind of hard to believe that in a way as well like Genuinely, I, I honestly feel like there are people who do things that they do just out of the goodness of their hearts. But at the same time, we can't help but think that as humans, there's also a bit of selfishness in this because they're doing it for your own self-satisfaction first. Like it makes you feel better that you're doing these types of things. And I believe that Akiyoshi is that type of person. She genuinely believes in the causes that she's doing, specifically for Mawai, but it also... It's also because it's something that makes her feel good. Like there's no person that's 100% altruistic, which is I feel like what the film is also trying to put out there. But it doesn't mean that we don't have to try. Like there's this particular line in there where Tabata's friend was saying, you know, I, we, it's easy to laugh at people who say that they want to change the world or anything like that. But then what am I doing outside of it? I, I'm just an outsider laughing at them. Like at least they have this vision and you sort of like understand that. <laughs> you sort of like get that through this film. Now, a couple of years again pass and Aki, after the whole incident, Akiyoshi was never seen in school again. Um, and then a year later, um, Kaide, Kaide or Tabata discovers that, you know, some of the other members, they rebuilt Moai in a way that, you know, it's still, it's still that thing where it does community work and stuff like that. So there's still a sense of like the vision on, in terms of changing the world and it's there. And he can't help but think or have this wishful thinking in a way that he tried to expose himself as the one who caused the demise of Moai but people sort of like brushed it off nonchalantly um, and it sort of like put him in, in this certain distraught um, but again it's it's this idea that he didn't he didn't become the person that he wanted to be because this entire experience sort of just destroyed him in a way and he he saw but after a year or so of not seeing Akiyoshi or not being able to apologize to her for, for what he did, he finally saw her again. And he saw her in this light that, you know, that as how he once saw her back when they met. Um, and he followed her and he was running. And that final scene where you, you listen to what he was thinking, like he was thinking that, you know, what caused this entire thing was that he was afraid to open up in the first place. And then he did. And he sort of like fell into the spiral of, 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 of wanting to just belong to this person and this cause and this vision. Um, and he, was, he ran after her and in his mind, you know, his final words was, was that, you know, he's, he, 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 he's okay to get hurt again. He it's sort of like this idea that he's willing to take that risk again. Um, despite everything that has happened, um, he wanted to give this another shot. You know, that, that whatever it is, like it doesn't necessarily, again, it doesn't imply anything romantic or anything at all. It's just wanting to belong to someone and be with someone again in that manner where, where you 
absolutely know that you care for this other person um and opening yourself up to the possibility of getting hurt again or being betrayed again or anything like that like that was the last line of the film and to me i don't know but that left such a good moment or such a good impression to me as to how it ended i don't know exactly what happens after that which i think is absolutely beautiful because the way that they cut it you know the way that he said that final line and then just cuts it off point blank i feel like you know that definitely left the strongest impression especially with how this entire thing was moving um and yeah now overall i do think that this is a film that not a lot of people would get like it's either you get akiyoshi or you get tabata or you don't get their characters at all which i think is fine um it is a very straightforward film like the way that it's the, the to at least for me there was no confusing parts in the film that would make a viewer you know any casual viewer feel like you know they're not understanding anything about it because i feel like it was something that is told in a very straightforward kind of manner so again any casual viewer i feel like would be able to enjoy this film um but it definitely falls on the interpretation and how it's going to affect you because for me personally this is a film that has affected me so much because you can simply just i don't know like there's just so much to absorb with how Tabata and Akiyoshi's character turned out characters turned out to be and again that whole exchange that they had mid climax of the film and at the same time how the film ended that left such a powerful impression for me and I absolutely love this film because of it um so yeah uh now Again, overall, I feel like again this is a beautifully done film. I'm not sure how it compares to the novel or anything like that, but for me personally, this is a movie that I both enjoyed and at the same time really left a huge impression as I kept on mentioning. But yeah, overall, there's that. Um tell me down in the comments below what are your thoughts on this film? Um what are your thoughts on any of it like the themes the acting anything that pour that went into this film i would love to hear your thoughts about it um if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and if you're new to my channel and you would want to hear more from me please hit subscribe thank you so much for watching this video and i hope to see you again soon in a new one